After placing tracks, I'm sure you would not want to manually build the waypoint lists for your trains. My name is Ram and welcome to Polytransport. I want to make a simple transport tycoon game to explore good old tile maps and because I like trains. I suggest you watch the first video of this series to get up to date with the basics of this game. In this video, I will explain how to automatically generate tracks data for your trains by analyzing the tile map so that objects, like trains in this case, can interact with the tiles. A train is just an image with a position and a script. To move it, we need to define a path in the form of a list of points to follow. If we had only a few train tracks, we could manually build those waypoint lists. But as the game grows bigger, it needs to be automated. In order to do that, we have to define the points to use on each tiles, analyze the tile map, and construct the tracks using an algorithm. So let's dive into the algorithm. I warn you that this becomes a little technical, but it is necessary if you want to automate something of this complexity. First, we have to clearly define what we have and what we want. Then, it is simply a matter of creating the algorithm that will transform what we have into what we want. In other words, we have inputs, analysis and transformation, and output. We do this by using the tools we have, in this case, functions in GDScript. Let's define what we want first. When placing a track in the tile map editor, we want to generate a list of waypoints that will overlay the tracks. Then we define what we have. First, allow me to explain a few terms. A tile type can be referenced by a name or an ID. Using tileset.getTilesIDs, we get a list of tile IDs used by this tileset. Using tileset.tiledGetName of an ID, we get the name of this tile as we defined in the previous video. When we place a certain tile in the tile map, it places it in a cell. The cell is the position of that tile. It starts with 0, 0 in the top left corner and increases by 1 right and down. Using tilemap.getUseCellById, we get the list of all cells occupied by that tile that has the specified ID. After placing a tile in the tile map editor, we can use those functions to extract a list of cells for a particular tile type. This allows us to create a dictionary that contains the position of every tiles in our world. Now that we know the position of each type of tracks, we need to define the track data for each type. In a sprite, we use the size of the tiles to get the points for each tracks. In this case, I choose that trains will drive on the right side, so for the straight tracks, we can define two tracks like so. We also want to have our train wagons point the correct direction, so for each point, we define the rotation. This one is going down, so it will have a 90 degrees rotation, and this one is going up, so it will have a negative 90 degrees rotation. It is similar for the diagonal and station tracks, but for the switch, we have to add a few points. Finally, we write the steps to transform the information we have into the information we want. Get all tiles from our tile maps, create data objects, and organize our tiles by types and dictionaries. Now that we completely defined our problem, we can implement a solution in GDScript. I like to structure my games a certain way with a controller on top. For now it does nothing, but eventually it will deal with overhead stuff like loading and saving. The world object holds the tile maps, the trains, and the game logic. The ready function is our entry point, and the first step is to analyze the tile maps. For that, we create the object tiles that takes the tile maps as argument. Tile dictionary is the dictionary of all data we get from the tile maps that we created in the editor, and it looks like that. Then we process the tracks. This function is the meat of the algorithm. It loops through all the names, stations, straight, switch, and diagonal. So for each cell of each type of tile, it creates a track tile object and adds it to the proper dictionary. Track tile is a custom object that extends tile, another custom object. Tile holds information such as if it was flipped or transposed. Each track has points, rotation values for wagon, and legs length. 
I will explain in more details the significance of this in the next video about moving trains on the route. But we are not done yet. Each track data that we got from the tile map is processed to match the orientation of the tile and is finally translated to match the position as well. Now that the track tile is created and tracks are set, we place it in the proper dictionary according to its type. The world can now draw lines to show the tracks. For each track of each track tile, draw a line with the points of this track with the given color index. And this is what it looks like. I added some fancy moving gradient texture for fun, but you can see that straight and diagonal tiles have one-way track and switch and stations have two-way tracks. I really hope that you learned something new, and if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer it in the comment section or on Discord. In the next episode, I will show you how to create routes and move trains. Thanks for watching. Hey, by the way, have a look at Buzzy Field on itch.io with the Bees update ready to be played.